We've just docked at Brisbane's new international cruise terminal facility. The docking process is taking a little while and the captain said yesterday that they were allowing lots of time to do it since it was the first time that they would be docking a ship here at the new terminal. So I'll show you around that terminal in a little bit. If you can hear that noise, that's a perk of being at the aft end of the ship. The Brisbane International Cruise Terminal is the newest purpose-built cruise terminal in Australia. The facility was completed in mid-2020, which meant it fell victim to the ongoing pandemic and therefore was only officially opened the day that our ship, the Pacific Explorer, arrived in port on June 2nd, 2022. It seemed fitting that the P&O Australia flagship would be the vessel marking the occasion. We're trapped. We can't go anywhere at the moment. A few moments later. Upon leaving the ship, passengers are greeted with a 270 meter elevated walkway that transports them from the terminal to the ship and vice versa. The lengthy bridge is suspended well over the Brisbane River below and allows ships to berth in deeper water away from the shallows. The long walkway provides for some lovely views of both the ship and the surrounding landscape, with open panels in the walls giving it a typically Queensland feel, with great cross ventilation, even on this chilly winter day. At the end of the walkway, the entrance to the two-storey, 10,000 square metre terminal beckons. This section is where Border Force will set up for international cruise ship arrivals and to the right is where arriving passengers will undergo security screening before making their way on board. The flow through the terminal is really good with wide walkways and a choice of elevators or escalators to make the trip down to the lower level. Once on the ground floor, the baggage hall is where guests will collect their suitcases when they choose for the cruise line to remove them at the end of a voyage. Exiting the hall, one-way access doors, much like you find at airports, adds an extra layer of security. This new terminal was built in order to future-proof Queensland's cruise industry. For years, ships that exceeded 270 metres in length had no choice but to dock across the river at the industrial terminal, making it an unpleasant experience for passengers and cruise lines alike. I've just made my way off the Pacific Explorer into Brisbane's brand new international cruise terminal. And I have to say, as far as cruise terminals go, this one looks very nice, new, clean. Uh, there's a bit of a long walk from the ship, but it's through a really nicely uh, organized breezeway. So it's got open slats. 
So I imagine in summer you'll get a nice breeze through there at the moment. In, the, in winter it's a little bit fresh but it's really nice. Uh, the grounds, once you get out of the terminal, they're wide, they're open. There's a lot of car parking here from what I can see. At the moment there's a lot of media and I believe they had Ricky Lee, an Australian singer, uh, doing a bit of a welcome for the ship this morning and for the official opening of the terminal. May have missed that because I was on the balcony enjoying room service breakfast, but I mean, what are you going to do? Construction on the terminal commenced at the end of 2017. Outside, the terminal consists of large open green space with room for baggage drop, shuttle arrivals and departures, seating areas, parking for over 900 vehicles, as well as fantastic views of the ship. Parking is available in both short and long-term options, meaning passengers embarking on a cruise can enjoy the convenience of driving to and parking at the terminal. The parking facility is operated by Wilson Parking and you can go to their website to learn more about those options. The wharf itself is 208 metres in length and consists of a 450 metre berthing pocket, suitable for even the largest cruise ships in the world. The terminal is only open on days that cruise ships are in port. To mark the official opening of the terminal, dignitaries were in attendance, including the Queensland State Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk and Carnival Australia and p and Australia President Marguerite Fitzgerald. So, look, to, to Carnival, um, thank you very much for everything that you've been doing, p and we, we know that uh, the industry is just going from strength to strength. It is honestly um, a standout um, pillar of our economy. And the fact that cruising is back and people can get out there and enjoy what they love, meeting new friends, establishing friendships that they'll keep for a lifetime, um, and you get to see so many beautiful parts of our country. Uh, today is a day to be celebrated. It was truly a great experience to be part of the event and I have no doubt that Queensland will begin to attract some of the world's newest and largest ships in no time. So perhaps a little more work on local cruise infrastructure will be needed before we see an Oasis class in our waters. After touring the terminal and the grounds, and enjoying the ceremony, we decided to board the ship and enjoy a quiet afternoon on the pool deck, so it was straight back to the oasis of course. A spectacular Queensland sunset marked the beginning of Bianco Night, which is one of several theme nights that P&O puts on during its cruises. For dinner tonight, it was to the main dining room, the complimentary restaurant called The Waterfront. We were seated immediately and service was very efficient. The food was tasty, though I'll give you more of my feedback on the dining options in a follow-up review video. After dinner, it was to the Marquee Theatre to watch a show, this time a P&O favourite Johnny Balance. A fun mix of both magic and comedy was a great way to spend an hour or so. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my next installment on the P&O Pacific Explorer First Cruise Vlog.